Hello, uh, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll talk about how to implement dependency injection in a WPF application and the choice of uh, framework would be .NET Core. Okay, and uh, just to give a very brief overview of dependency injection is uh, uh, it's, a, it's a way of implementing inversion of control uh, design principle. What it says is that an object, it should not worry about creating its dependent object by itself. Okay, so what this dependency injection framework does is it helps in the creation of this object, maintaining its lifetime as well as injecting injecting them uh, to its user object. Okay, so uh, what we are going to do is we are going to build a .NET Core WPF application, and uh, we are uh, we will be using a NuGet package uh, called Microsoft Extensions Dependency Injection. Uh, this package is available both for standard uh, framework as well as for .NET Core. So we are going to use this framework and uh, implement, uh, see how we can implement dependency injection in WPF application. Okay. And uh, the second package which we are going to use is a Microsoft Entity Framework Core.SQLite. So uh, the idea here is that we'll build a demo which consists of a SQLite database in the back end and we will be using uh, DB context in order to make interaction with that and for that we are going to use the SQLite and uh, what we are going to do is that we are going to register that DB context in the dependency framework service collection and uh, we will see how uh, the framework help us to inject that thing in the application and we can use it okay so for this let's go to uh, Visual Studio here we are going to uh, create a new project and I'll be typing WPF okay and uh, I'll be selecting WPF.NET Core and I'll click next and here I'll type dependency injection demo application okay so I'll just click on create and I'll wait uh, for the application to get created by Visual Studio and get loaded into it okay so we'll wait for it okay uh, now here we can see that uh, the application is created and loaded into Visual Studio so what we are going to do is first and foremost we are going to go, go and import these uh, dependent NuGet packages in our application so we'll right click on dependencies we'll go to browse and uh, here what we are going to do okay we already have this thing so we are going to uh, bring this package to our application the first one is the Microsoft extensions dot dependency injection so we'll click on install and we'll click on ok we'll accept the license agreement and we'll wait for it to get installed okay now it is installed the second package which we want to use is the Microsoft's uh, entity framework course dot SQLite okay so I'll just uh, select this and click on install okay and I'll say okay and I'll accept all the license agreement okay now all the packages are installed successfully so what I'm going to do is I'll just close all this thing and I'll just do a build okay and check everything is okay and we have no compilation error okay fine so uh, next what we are going to do is we are going to add a folder called data okay and uh, within this folder application uh, in this sorry within this data folder we are going to add a class called employee so this class will act as a model uh, for our application okay and we are going to store few uh, data in it so what I've done is I have uh, already written few lines of code so that you don't need to see me typing okay so this employee class have three properties first one is ID second one is first name and the last one is last name okay so we'll just save this now next what we are going to do is we are going to add a DB context class so we'll call this employee DB context we'll make this class public and we'll inherit from db context class and 
we are going to import the entity core framework namespace okay cool so next uh, I've already written the code so I'll just bring them here okay now I'll explain you this code so what we have done is here uh, we have uh, created the constructor and inside the constructor we are passing the employee DB con uh, sorry uh, the DB context option okay and we are passing this option uh, to the base class and within this constructor we are making sure that uh, the database which we want is created once we access this uh, context class okay the second thing which we have done is that we have created a public property of DB set uh, which holds a reference to our employee which is the model for this class third what we have done is that we have overridden the on model creating method so that uh, we can populate our database with some records over here okay so we have called this get employee here and we are making sure that uh, this model uh, builder will uh, pull uh, put this uh, data within this database inside this data uh, sorry inside this entity employee okay so this is it now uh, next what we are going to do is we are going to create a code so that we can use the dependency injection in our class so in order to implement that first we'll create a variable of service provider okay and uh, this thing comes from the Microsoft extensions dependency injection namespace okay so we will import that okay we'll give the variable a name and next what we are going to do is uh, we are going to put some code in the constructor of this app class okay the first thing is that we are going to build a service collection we we'll name it as service okay next uh, since we have uh, got our provider class the service collection uh, object now we have to register some services to this service collection okay so what we are going to do is we are going to create a private method within this uh, app class so that uh, we can register all our objects there itself so I'll create a method so I'll consider services and we'll pass this service there and we'll generate this method okay so uh, within this method we are going to register all our services okay next what we have to do is that we have to build this services okay so it says services dot build service provider sorry okay so we have build our service provider now in this method what we are going to do is we are going to register our employee DB context to this services collection okay so let's do that we'll add a DB context that is of type employee DB context we'll bring the namespace okay and here we have to pass the DB context option and within the within this option we are going to say that please use SQLite okay and we are going to bring uh, the namespace here that is of Microsoft entity framework code and uh, within this we are going to pass the connection employee the connection string okay so we have registered our employee DB context uh, to the services okay next uh, what we are going to do is we are going to register this main window to the services to the service as well okay so we just want a single uh, instance of this main window class so we are going to register as a singleton okay so this is done now uh, in WPF if you go to app.xaml here we can see that the startup URI is main window dot xaml okay so what we are going to do is we are going to remove this thing and uh, we want the dependency framework to inject uh, the instance of main window on the startup event of this application class okay so what we are going to do is we are going to create on startup method on 
pass startup event org and here what we are going to do is we are going to ask the framework dependency framework to provide the instance of main window okay so we will create the variable here and we will say service provider please give me the instance of main window which we have registered to you okay so this is going to return the service the main window and what we are going to do is we are going to display the window and we are done okay now what we are, what we have to do is we go back to app.xaml and here on startup event or uh, yeah startup event we are going to call the startup on startup method okay so this method will get called the object will be asked from the dependency framework provider and it will show the main window okay so let us do one thing let's just execute the application and see if uh, the main window gets loaded okay so i'll just uh, execute the application without debugging so i'll click on it the main window should get loaded okay perfect the main window is loaded okay so we'll just close it okay now what we want to do is uh, we want to make use of this employee db context and display some value on the main window user interface okay so for that we'll go to main window xaml.cs class and here uh, we will create employee db context variable we'll import the namespaces we'll give it a name of db context we'll copy this name and uh, we'll okay put it there we'll say this dot okay now uh, this constructor does not exist and this dependency should get injected uh, via the dependency framework okay so it should get injected here now we will make a provision uh, so that uh, we can display all the employees on the user interface okay so for that what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a another method called get employees and here i'll get the list of employees okay so employees and i'll ask the db context to give me all the employees as list okay so we got this now what we need to do is we will display this employees on the user interface okay so for that uh, we need to add some code in the xaml class okay so we'll go here and uh, here we are going to use a data grid and we'll populate that okay so for that i've already written a code i'll explain you what it does so inside uh, this data grid what we have done we have first and foremost we have given it a name so that uh, we can access it from uh, the backend code though this this is not recommended and we should use mvvm design pattern but uh, just for the sake of demo we are doing it directly okay and the second thing which i have done is i have uh, marked the auto generated columns as false and inside this data grid i have uh, created three different columns which is id first name last name and i have binded all those data to the respective employee uh, property okay so let's go back to xaml class and here we need to set this employees to the item source property of the data grid okay so this is it so now when we execute uh, when we execute this application sorry last thing which i forgot to mention that we need to call this method okay okay now when we execute this application the data context first and foremost uh, the database would get created i'll show you that okay this per record should get uh, inserted within this employee table which will get created in the database third this uh, db context should return this four records okay as a list and then we are setting this employees to the item source of the data grid and it should get displayed on the user interface okay so i'm going to put a breakpoint over here 
okay and i'll execute the application and later we are going to go and check the database as well okay now we have hit the breakpoint so when we step forward we see that employee is having now four different records so we'll just remove this thing and we'll hit f5 and it should get displayed on the user interface here perfect now here we can see that uh, the data is being displayed on the user interface and this dependent object that is employee db context is being pushed from the dependency framework to this main window okay and uh, just for verification uh, purpose i'll go i'll stop the application once and i'll show you that uh, this database is created for that i'll just open the build location of this application and here we can see that uh, the employee database is created just in order to verify the data what i'm going to do is i'll open my sql studio application so that i can verify the table and uh, the data in it so i'll just open the database i'll go to the path where it is created i'll add this employee database i'll just double click on it there is the table and if you click click on this table and if you go to data you, here we can see that all four basic databases uh, basic uh, records which we wanted to get created when the database is created is present here okay so we will just execute our application once more and verify those records are exactly same as in our database yes perfect okay cool now we'll go back to visual studio and i'll go back to app.xaml now this is how we do uh, dependency injection in wps basically we call that nuget package microsoft uh, go to the package we can see that we are calling this microsoft extensions dot dependency injection and uh, in order to use that we have to have a service provider okay and uh, we create a service collection and within this collection we register all our object ins instances which we want uh, uh, this provider to uh, inject to all the relevant object who needs it and uh, the third thing which we have done is uh, we have called to get the instance of it okay so i believe uh, this video is helpful and uh, thank you for watching have a great day